in continuing that concept of the education of life matters. This is different than the philosophical studies that we learn in just the university throughout the land. Because there are many great men and women who've learned but never attended the physical uh, university because this is more or less hopefully a thought-provoking attempt to get us to reason with the education of life that really matters. Just think about it, or various thoughts that can affect our way of reason, like our appetites. Appetites going unchecked can sway the results of things. Now, what are appetites? I'm just giving you a few things to think about first, and then we'll continue. And then think about after you do work, what is the result of that? So results of obedience versus results of ignoring things. What will the result reflect? A quick, simple way is we know that thought that you're thinking about plus action brings about a result. Now to improve that, wouldn't it be nice just to think about this? Proper thought then plus the proper reaction to that thought to give you the proper result. So this is a challenge for us in my conclusion of the first part, just to get us to think about what we are hearing today. You could ask yourself, what enlarges your capacity to reason? And at the same time, think about what decreases your ability to grow, to grow not only mentally, morally, and spiritually, but the growth that starts within. How can we get the benefit of that on the outside? So, and given just a bird's eye view of things, or a, a plain view of things, we could ask ourselves, what are the real challenges to reasoning? Because it's the reasoning that's going to affect our ability to do things. What can impact our reason? It causes us to go forward or to delay or even take a different course. So in continuing this in the end, it said, because all of those gifts that we sometimes take for granted, even the ability to reason, Allah said, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and give up what remains of your demand for usury. So you may have these gifts and then there's a determination of what you would do with those gifts. But here in the Quran, the Book of Guidance, 
Allah says, oh, you who believe, fear Allah. That's top one, Allah. A reverence, the way you receive those. It says, give up what remains of your demand for usury. Teaching us not to be selfish or just look for what we can get. Because the last part of that verse says, if you are indeed believers. So we cannot downplay that last statement because if Allah blessed us with it and we feel that it's something to improve our life in a healthy way, a moral way, a mental, and anything that creates a stability for ourselves in this society, then we do it for the sake of Allah and not for world gain and claim for ourselves. So understand this. And in so obeying Allah, we pray that Allah will bless us in our attempt to serve Him better. And keep in mind the thought is the education of life now. So, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to give that as an introduction to our way of reason. And may Allah open up our heart and mind. And may Allah bless you to be able to come forth and share what you have been blessed with, freely for the sake of Allah. And I greet you as I came before you. I salam alaykum. Again, I greet you. I salam alaikum. So, for the second part, and continuing with a charity, we were learning a little bit on what the education of life and how it matters. And in the Quran, it shows you the charity of Allah. Never could we count, as the Quran says, the favors of Allah. Those are charities given to us for guidance. Then after we receive an understanding of our reasoning to be appreciative, what should we do? And we're not left wondering, should I do this or do that? Because if we learn to appreciate from the one who created this for us, who gave us all of these charitable gifts freely to everyone, like it's mentionable. The sun shines on the good, bad, and ugly for whatever the purpose. But for the good, there is also greater rewards when they are charitable, when they do things to seek the pleasure of Allah. And it goes on in the Quran to say this. And fear the day when you be brought back to Allah. Then shall every soul be paid what it earns and none shall be dealt with unjustly. So just think, individually. When it comes to that last competition of why you do good, if in your heart you can say, I did it for the sake of Allah, and mean it by your character bearing witness to your purpose, to your desire that if Allah bless you with the ability to be a builder, you do it earnestly to help others, to be a worker, a husband, a wife, dedicated student, then in that, note that 
It's a law that witnesses our character, and it's a law that will pay us in those last days of what we have done. And most of that subject came out of the Quran in Haidar al Baqarah. And the reason why it's so important to reference it for those who go back and study it, to see and ask Allah to bless them with insight into the understanding because those who not only may not understand the Arabic as clearly as they desire, but even in English, if we look at the English that's put there by certain translators, we even have to be somewhat cautious because in the vernacular that it was given at the time of translation, there were words used that has taken on different meaning in today's language. The proof is in the pudding. We had a leader in the name, Imam Warfadi Muhammad, who took that same language that we use commonly and caused us to look at it in a different way, a way that could be more helpful. And oftentimes I remind you, the language of dust. No one wants to be dirty all dusty. And then he gave a positive description of Allah's blessing of the dust. Even though in other religions we say from dust we come to dust we return. But he even broadened that to let us know in the dust, that movable part of the earth that helps us and hides different things that's in the earth. If we study and ask the Lord to bless us with insight into the earth, then he can bless us to extract out of that dust or the earth things that are helpful. Now before we elaborate into any degree on that, we know the dust and the earth, in the earth house many fortunes, even those who like to look at the jewels of the earth, I mean physically like the gold, the diamonds, the ruby, and feel a certain astonishment in their uh, glory or glitter or whatever. They place a certain value. And to make it simple, go try to purchase a diamond. Try to purchase a ruby as in contrast to these rocks that we see out here. Not knowing that those rocks that we see out there may even house some of the mineral constituents that is put together in the formation of the diamond, of the ruby, the gold. So sometimes we take for granted what we are looking at when we look at each other. Instead of looking at us, each other with envy, jealousy, and hatred, and racism, why don't we look at how Allah created humanity? And for what purpose did he create all of these things? Like we study the trees, we see that in the trees we get wood, we get fruit, we get a lot of benefit. Well, what about the human being? In the Quran, it gives us the answer. And the day that we are living in here today, called COVID-19, we'll get the answer. Knowing that in the human being, Allah created every human being to grow into intelligent speech. Intelligence speaks of a level of learning that will help us to sustain not only our life, but the life in society. Because we see now that without the scientists, without the people that's aware of how to protect each other, 
There are many lives being taken and nothing can happen without the permission of Allah. So why I tell you this is it's not just to recite quote, quotation from the Quran or if you is a, a, a Bible student or Torah, not just to quote it and not understand how to impart some of the great wisdom housed in each one of those words. Because I know in the earlier scripture, let's say like the Bible or Torah, it says the word took on flesh. Now how can a word take on flesh? It means that the behavior of that word and the exchange of that word can cause a lot of things to come into being. Example, female reminder, from dust to industry, the same word. But how we can see the value in Allah's creation, that gift, that charity, that Allah put there for us. And Allah constantly reminds the believers who obtain that wisdom and understanding that it is Allah that blesses us. So in the word taken on flesh is the flesh would be the more appearance of how that word could come into action. How that word could take on a different dimension than just the literal saying of a word, that it becomes part of the creation of our reasoning, that it becomes the mechanic of change in our ability to improve our life. And in so doing, we can better appreciate the meaning of from dust to industry, how we take dust and could go into the dust and bring out things that we need for our livelihood. What if we see that physically? Then we have to look at it in other dimensions. How is our character that affect individuals around us? And how that could be a great benefit if we will listen and obey to the one who created us. And the one who created us mentions to us, the believers, in this Quran, that Allah created us not for us to despise each other, but to get to know each other. And then, for what purpose? How we could be helpers of one another. And we even heard that part being helpers of one another in earlier revelation. So Allah had kept a track of us learning and gaining information so as of today, we won't have an excuse to lose unless we ignore the truth that is plentiful all around us. And that we can always refer to. So in my conclusion, first and foremost I want to thank Allah for blessing us with all the great leaders that came before us and I pray Allah bless us to show our appreciation by doing the things that we learn in reading the Quran and then when we have a greater opening especially from this COVID-19 because pretty soon we can reopen and we'll get together and we pray Allah in a better spirit, a better spirit of motivation to do things that are help the community and not just ourselves. So that in helping beyond ourselves, they show growth in ourselves. And because a selfish person would even ignore 
what it says in earlier scriptures. Be fruitful and multiply. Because no man or woman is an island by themselves. So there are intercourses that we uh, come in contact with that can create a various growth. And not only there is physical intercourses, there is mental and spiritual intercourse as we study and read Allah's creation. And we've been so blessed with how to read. And Allah gave us that gift in the gift of the Quran. And read it for yourself. It's in the first few verses in the book of the Quran. Not only Al Fatiha, Al Baqarah, all the way through An Nas. Those are different surahs from beginning to end. But if we will study it, Allah will bless us and enhance our ability to do things for the sake of Allah. And I want you to realize that it's Satan that don't want us to study and read the Quran as it should be. Because it's Satan that threatens us with poverty. Poverty speaks of the lack of things. And ignorance is what lacks us in being more obedient and more productive. But if we come together and share with one another for the sake of Allah, then we will be successful. So I thank you, thank the listening audience, and I pray that Almighty God, Allah, blesses all of us with sincerity in our hearts and minds to read and study and be obedient servants to Allah. As I came before you, I greet you again. I salam alaikum.